Here is your latest African news. Africa wide, strength beyond all odds is the theme for this year's International Albinism Awareness Day. Albinism is a rare non-contagious genetically inherited difference present at birth. In almost all types of albinism, both parents must carry the gene for it to be passed on, even if they do not have albinism themselves. The condition is found in both sexes, regardless of ethnicity and in all countries of the world. Albinism results in a lack of pigmentation or melanin in the hair, skin and eyes, causing vulnerability to the sun and bright light. People with albinism face multiple forms of discrimination worldwide. Albinism is still profoundly misunderstood by populations, socially and medically. The physical appearance of persons with albinism is often the object of erroneous beliefs and myths influenced by superstitions which foster their marginalization and social exclusion. This leads to various forms of stigma and discrimination which needs to be stopped immediately. Zambia. Former President Kaunda admitted to hospital. Zambia's former President Kenneth Kaunda has received treatment for an undisclosed illness at a military hospital in the capital of Lusaka. His administrative assistant, Roderick Ngolo, said Kaunda, 97, had been feeling unwell and had been admitted to the Mena Soko Medical Center in Lusaka. Kaunda ruled Zambia from 1964 when the Southern African nation won its independence from Britain until 1991. After retiring, he has been involved in various charitable organizations. His most notable contribution has been his zeal in the fight against the spread of HIV and AIDS. He's among Africa's few surviving liberation heroes. Ethiopia. Ethiopian holy city reels from Tigray crisis. For Ethiopian Orthodox Christians who compromise more than 40, comprise more than 40% of their country's population and most of the people in the Tigray region, the city of Aksum is the holiest of places. They believe it to be home to the Ark of the Covenant or original Ten Commandments and the birthplace of Ethiopian Christianity. In the past years, pilgrims and tourists would flock to Aksum to pray, visit historical sites and snap pictures. Last year, when the coronavirus pandemic swept the world, people stayed away. Then in November 2020, war broke out and visitors stopped coming almost completely. In recent months, Aksum has quieted, uh, with violence mostly taking place in the countryside. The city has also begun hosting different kinds of visitors. Families displaced by war in their villages and small towns have come in their droves, crowding into empty schoolhouses and on the grounds of the church. Somalia Puntland. Somalia Puntlands to criminalize FGM. Female genital mutilation will soon be criminalized in semi-autonomous northeastern region of Somalia, Puntland. Puntland President Said Abdullahi and his cabinet last week approved an anti-FGM bill. Parliament is to debate and approve it, setting the legal ground for ending the vice that affects 97% of the Somali women and girls aged between 15 and 49 years. Anyone who performs circumcision in the region will face the full force of the law. The bill would include stiff penalties for those who perform FGM, including hospitals, midwives, and traditional circumcisers. Diaspora, enslaved Africans cemetery discovered on Caribbean island. On the grounds of the Caribbean island airport in St. Eustatius, archaeologists have discovered a former slave gravesite. 53 skeletons have already been uncovered. First analysis shows that they are people of African origin, probably the first generation of enslaved people who were brought to the island. The discovery is considered absolutely unique. Never before has a burial site of this scale been discovered on any of the Caribbean islands. In addition to the excavations, DNA analysis are to be carried out to find out where in Africa the former slaves came from. Most of what is known so far comes from the writings of colonial administrators and plantation owners. South Africa. Unsuitable J&J &J vaccines won't be released for use in South Africa. 
The South African Health Products Regulatory Authority has decided not to release the long-awaited Johnson & Johnson vaccines for use in the country. However, SAPRA said about 300,000 doses from batches that have been cleared by the US Food and Drug Administration meet the requirements and will subsequently be released and shipped to South Africa. This comes after the FDA authorized two batches of the drug substance produced by Emergent Biosolutions in Baltimore, United States, and determined that several others are not suitable for use. Sapra reviewed the data provided by the FDA and has made a decision not to release the vaccine produced using the drug substance batches that were not suitable. The drug watchdog has recently shared this information. The FDA has been investigating potential contamination problems at a COVID-19 vaccine plant in Baltimore, which has had a knock-on effect locally. Kenya. Kenya to reopen its embassy in Somalia. The Somali Minister of Foreign Affairs has sent a letter last weekend to his Kenyan counterpart inviting him to reopen the Kenyan diplomatic representation in Mogadishu, which was closed since December after Somali broke off diplomatic relations between the two states. The unilateral decision, according to Mogadishu, came in response to Kenya's recurrent and blatant political violations against Somalia's sovereignty. The situation led to the expulsion of the Kenyan ambassador in Mogadishu, while the Somali ambassador in Nairobi was recalled. In a letter published on Monday, its Twitter account, the Kenyan Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced that the government of the Republic of Kenya acknowledges and welcomes the invitation of the federal government of Somalia to restore diplomatic relations between Somalia and Kenya. South Africa, intrigue as Diamond Rush hits South African village. More than 1,000 fortune seekers yesterday flocked to the village of Kwahlati in South Africa's KwaZulu Natal province in search of what they believed to be diamonds after a discovery of unidentified stones in the area. The people traveled from across South Africa to join villagers who have been digging since Saturday after a herdman who dug up the first stone on an open field which some believe to be quartz crystals put out the word. The Mines Department said on Monday it was sending a team comprising of geological mining experts to the site to collect some samples and conduct an analysis of a, and a formal technical report to be issued in due course. The lack of an analysis of the stones has not deterred the fortune seekers as long as the lines of parked cars on both sides of the gravel road could be seen just a few meters from the open field where the old, the young, female, male dug through the soil with picks, shovels and forks to find their riches. Thank you so, so much for watching. Visit our YouTube channel, Tuna Checky, to watch our weekly news report and our website at tunacheki.tv for all the latest African news updates. You can directly support this news series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a patron. And remember, Africa is watching. And please, Feel free to leave your suggestions, news tips or topics about Africa that you'd like us to explore.